Hey everybody, Jake here from CVP, and today we are taking a look at a brand new mirrorless hybrid camera from Canon. This is the R6 Mark II. This new camera is aimed at being Canon's go-to mirrorless hybrid at the sub £3,000 price point, and we have really enjoyed our time testing out this little beast. The camera we got in for testing was a beta sample, so we were limited to exactly what testing we could do, and image quality and performance can potentially change. We only had a couple of days with the camera, but we did manage to test it out in a few different scenarios to try to capture some real world stills and video. We shot more stills than we normally would have, as this is going to be a hybrid camera with a slightly more focused spec towards stills. We've tried to get the camera in a few different scenarios, but one I was really excited to capture was some live music at the O2 Indigo. This was great to put the camera through some more demanding testing compared to me luring a squirrel in the garden with some sunflower seeds. Shooting the gig wouldn't have actually been possible if it wasn't for our man Lou, who actually works with CVP managing our kit evaluations, and he absolutely killed it on base for Red Method at the show to a packed house. We'll cram as many photographs and videos as we can throughout the video, so let us know what you think of the image quality down below. Honestly, the R6 Mark II may be one of my favourite hybrid cameras I've ever used, mainly because of this new mode switch here. Unlike the switch on the R5C, the stills and video button is an instant switch here. This means you can go from taking stills to video in a much, much faster way than with the R5C, and many other mirrorless hybrid cameras as well. When you do this, the camera will remember the settings in each individual mode. So for the live music shoot, I had the camera set up for stills and then C-Log3 video, and the camera would remember my shutter speed, aperture, and ISO between the two different modes, so I didn't have to worry about messing with the settings when changing between the two. This really is incredibly quick to do. All you have to do is just hit the switch and you can get shooting again. From my experience, this is the best system I've ever used for switching between stills and video fast and effectively without having to worry about correcting settings on the fly. For any working professional needing to do both photo and video in fast run and gun scenarios, this will be a massive feature. One thing I did keep doing was hitting the video photo switch though meaning to turn the camera on and off, as this was the old location on the R6, R5 and R5C. But I'm sure this is something people will get used to. Here's a quick list of the key lenses we shot everything with here. The R6 Mark II features a new 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor, which is a roughly four megapixel increase over the original R6. And I think it is a good increase and a pretty good megapixel count for many content creators. It's a great resolution for stills and when in video, the internally recorded 4K downsamples the extra resolution, which should result in some great looking 4K footage. When it comes to rolling shutter, you can definitely see some jello when panning very fast. However, performance does look good considering the increase in resolution. The R6 Mark II doesn't have any second native ISO or anything, however we can see clear steps of noise reduction as we go through the ISO range in C-Log3. In C-Log3, the native ISO is 800, though you can go below that while shooting you'll just be shifting your dynamic range about. C-Log3 can still look noisy if you don't expose properly, and that's still the case with the R6 Mark II. So if you do use it, make sure to nail your exposure or apply some light noise reduction in posts. During the gig, I shot at mainly 800 ISO when shooting video, and then between 3200 and 6400 for stills, so I could get a faster shutter. I haven't photographed a live music event for years, and it really is incredible how far cameras have come since I photograph gigs every single week. The images out of the R6 Mark II at these ISOs are amazing. Colours are rich, latitude in the RAWs is excellent, and the noise isn't too chroma heavy, but it does have some nice texture to it, which for live events like this, you really want. I love the natural rich colours that Canon cameras capture, and that still applies here with the R6 Mark II. There is definitely a small crop factor when going from stills to video mode, but that isn't surprising, and it's not too extreme. The R6 Mark II can record some great looking video, and has seen some great additions and changes over the original R6, such as this flashy red outline marker when you start recording, which you can toggle on and off in the menu. You can record full width 4K 60p, which is oversampling roughly 6K's worth of the sensor. However, when it comes to recording formats, you are limited to just IPP compression. There is no option for all eye. However, for most, this will be fine, and the footage still looks great. In Full HD, you can shoot up to 180 FPS, which doesn't look quite as good as the 4K60 obviously, but it's definitely usable. It uses the same picture profile menu that is present in previous Canon mirrors cameras, which means you can't import LUTs and there is no YDR, which is a bit frustrating. So if you want the most control over your image, you'll want to shoot in C-Log3. You can also shoot HDR PQ as well though. 
Thankfully, when you switch between stills and video mode using the switch that I mentioned earlier, your color profiles are separate, so you can have C-Log3 set up in video and then a regular picture profile for when you're shooting stills. There are also some new creative video effects, which may be cool for some people, but I can't see many people using them honestly. One massive annoyance that I wish Canon had solved with the R6 Mark II is the stupid micro HDMI port, especially when you can output 10-bit 6K or 3.7K 12-bit up to 60p in ProRes RAW. Outputting RAW can be a good option if you want to get slightly more out of the camera, but you will need to use a cable protector as micro HDMI is truly awful and will break after too much use or a knock. Adjusting white balance is easy, but creating a custom white balance is still not ideal or fast to do on the fly. You have to load a still frame in, not just select an area like you do on Sony's system for example, which is much better. In the camera's full HD mode, you can toggle with 10 times digital zoom, which can be controlled on the back of the camera on the LCD. This isn't quite as good as Sony's clear image zoom as you can't control the speed or use it in 4K, but this could be handy for someone and hopefully can refine it a little bit further. You also have a movie crop mode, which crops in on the image by roughly 1.6 times, which could be handy when needing a bit of extra reach out of your lenses, though this does limit what you can record in. In the shooting info display menu, you can control a few helpful things for video shooting, such as aspect markers. You can't control how these are overlaid or look, and there are a bunch for different delivery formats. The key ones being for social media content, which this camera will shoot a lot of. We've been using the R6 as our primary stills camera for events, BTS and social media imagery for the past year or so. So we've really gotten used to these systems and we'll be swapping our R6s out with these as soon as we can get our hands on them. The R6 Mark II is a gorgeous photography camera. Some of the stills that I've managed to capture over the weekend have come out really well. The camera can shoot 12 frames per second continuously in its mechanical mode or 40 in its electronic mode, which is insane. The buffer at 40 does fill up quite quickly and at least during our test shooting, shooting RAW and large JPEGs to RV90 card, bright speeds were quite slow compared to a camera using faster media type like the R3 or R5. The camera also has a new optical EVF simulation mode, which could be cool for some people. However, I think being able to see your exposure changing live in your viewfinder is one of the best changes mirrors cameras have made pretty standard now. It also has loads of photo modes, such as focus bracketing, which was intro in the R3 and R7, a panorama mode and a pre-capture raw burst mode. This burst mode will capture at 30 frames per second for half a second and allow you to select and save the best shots from that burst. It also has a built-in two times and four times digital converter though you will be sacrificing image quality here. The R3 has some of the best autofocus I've ever used and the R6 Mark II inherits a lot of the R3's autofocus performance, which is great. It features Canon's second version of DAF and a similar tracking system to the R3. This also includes an improved deep learning algorithm and claim performance down to minus 6.5 EV, a new intuitive auto select mode for subject detection, and detection for horses, aircraft and trains on top of everything else that was already possible now. It also has a face only AF mode for video and IAF is available in any autofocus mode now. What this all really means is that the autofocus is really awesome. Across all the time that I used it, it did a great job at recognizing subjects and tracking eyes. I did have moments where it tracked the wrong thing or lost subject, but it's a genuinely awesome system to use with excellent tweakability, no matter what you need to focus on. I was especially impressed at the gig with all the changing lighting conditions and fast action. It did a great job. It also did a stellar job at tracking all of the other subjects that I shot, specifically to test the human, animal and general tracking. It recognizes animals really well and sticks onto their eyes pretty consistently. The IBIS system seems to have been improved over the R6, but it still offers the same up to eight stops of IBIS when used with a lens that has optical image stabilization, such as the 24-70 f2.8 LRF, which we used a lot with this camera. From our tests, it performs well, but won't perform miracles when trying to get gimbal level smoothness. For stills, it's great. I managed to get some pretty slow shutter example images shooting handheld that I was surprised looked as good as they did when I got them into the laptop. It also has two digital IS modes, regular and enhanced digital IS, which is if you require better long lens stabilization performance. Both of these will crop your image quite a bit though. I got a good first impression from the camera here, but more testing is definitely needed to see if it beats out Panasonic and Sony systems. The R6 Mark II has a bunch of menu functions that are new to this level of Canon camera. It uses a very familiar looking menu system to Canon's existing stills menu. However, there has been a new quick control screen added, which is handy when in video mode. False color is a welcomed addition to this style of Canon menu system, and you can toggle it in the menu 
and see a quick chart showing the different colors and their associated exposure points. You can also assign this, as well as a bunch more, to any of the customizable buttons so you can quickly toggle it on and off. This works well on the depth of field preview button on the front of the camera. There is also a focus breathing compensation function that is limited to only a few lenses at release, but more should be coming. As most stills lenses are more prone to breathing, this is a great feature more and more cameras are getting. In camera you can toggle this on when using a compatible lens, just bear in mind this does apply a little bit of a crop. The R6 Mark II has a new high flicker reduction setting which can be used in both stills and video. In video mode, you can really dial in the shutter to allow you to get round a flicker produced by any pesky lights while shooting. This would be a really good addition for anyone shooting in unpredictable lighting conditions. It has a pre-recording function, which you can toggle between three and five seconds, which could be handy for certain shots or situations. It's just a bit of a shame this doesn't work in high frame rate mode, only with the regular format options. There is also a time-lapse movie function, which will allow you to create a stitched video file in camera or an interval timer function if you'd rather have a sequence of images in post. Physically, the R6 Mark II is very similar to the existing R6. It feels a bit more robust and solid in the hand though than the original one. It features the same rear LCD and 3.69 million dot EVF that can run up to 120 frames per second. It has the same rough button layout and weather resistance, but there are a few changes. Heat management is always a challenge with cameras this size, but throughout all the time that we used the camera, we didn't run into any overheating issues at all, which is good, but more testing is definitely needed. The camera doesn't have any artificial recording limit though, you can roll as long as your battery, media, and heat level dictate. It also has an updated multi-function shoe, which means you'll be able to use the Tascam XLR unit if you require better audio inputs and controls than what are on the camera as standard. The rear joystick has changed in design, I liked the redesign personally, but Joe had some trouble with it. The Modal has a new auto and special modes, and the power button is now on the other side separate to the mode switch as we mentioned earlier. The new on off switch also has a lock button, which can lock input across the camera. It has the same I.O. as the previous R6, and the same style covers for it as well. Though the USB has been updated to now support UVC, so it can be used as a webcam or stream camera easily. It also has the same dual UHS-2 card slots as the R6, and same recording modes such as dual record or putting video on one card and stills onto another. It also unsurprisingly uses LPE6 and the battery life was excellent. We only changed battery once or twice across a day shooting a good mix of stills and video. Having used Canon cameras for well over a decade now, the R6 Mark II is very comfortable to use and it feels very well balanced with the RF 24-70 on the front, which is what I used a lot while testing the camera. The first few iterations of Canon's mirrorless cameras didn't feel quite right for me to confidently use it for professional work, but the R6 Mark II feels equally as comfortable to use for me as a 5D Mark III, and I would happily take one on a shoot now without worrying about it. The R6 Mark II is a stellar hybrid camera. It builds on everything that was great with the R6, but improves the autofocus system, image quality in both stills and video, the overall video functionality, and is insanely fast to operate though at a slight premium over its competition. The R5C still has its place. It has far more video functions and options, but it is more expensive, power hungry, bigger, and slower to operate. The Sony a7 IV is going to be its biggest competition, and I think they both have different pros and cons over each other. Let us know if you'd like to see a comparison of them in the comments below. With the R6 Mark II, Canon also announced the highly anticipated 135mm f2 EF replacement. RF 135mm f1.8 LIS alongside a new speed light. I am really, really excited to check out this new lens. They also announced that there will be an update coming for their Camera Connect app, which looks to update the app with a more modern UI and improved setup process, but we didn't get a chance to check that out unfortunately. There may be something I didn't cover in this video, but this was just our first look and test at the camera in a short period of time, so let us know what you think of the Canon R6 Mark II in the comments below and if you have any more questions about it. If you like the video, please give it a like and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.